Today, I wanna to make a maple praline mead. So let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today, we're making a maple praline mead. Now, I have two ways to do this, and it's kind of a challenge to myself, also just something interesting, I think, for you guys. I have a maple praline flavoring from Amoretti. This is a, a natural uh, flavoring or an artisan flavoring from them. They do a lot of different stuff and some of their things are normal like grape and then they also have crazy things like, you know, maple praline, birthday cake, all of that stuff. This is basically maple praline in a bottle. So I'm gonna get my flavoring easily from this. I wanna try and make a con control, a normal quote, maple praline mead like this, just throwing in my flavoring. Then I'm gonna use a different method to try and recreate what the Amoretti is doing um, by using maple syrup and specifically some chopped up pecans in the future. In front of me, I have two gallons of mead that have already fermented, already done. You can see they're pretty clear. I mean, that's a pretty clear looking mead. Looks pretty good. It's from an experiment I did before and I just have some a bunch of meat I need to use. So this is gonna be my test or my starter batch basically for this project. Basically, we're just trying to make a maple praline mead two different ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and add to taste all of my maple or maple praline flavoring. This does have sugar in it, so it is gonna back sweeten slightly. It's also gonna add flavor. So let me go ahead and add this in and then I'll add my other part in. All right, so a couple things I missed saying earlier. Both of these have been stabilized with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, therefore allowing or really killing any possible fermentation. So adding sugar into here will not cause any more fermentation. That's thing number one. Thing number two, the maple syrup I have used here has no potassium sorbate, which is important because, well, I guess at this point it's not really important because generally potassium sorbate is um, something that doesn't get along with the yeast. Since I stabilized, it wouldn't really matter if there's potassium sorbate. If I was trying to back sweeten, or if I was trying to add um, maple syrup in to ferment with, you don't want potassium sorbate. Um, also, within just this little time of me mixing, I realized I wanna add an extra challenge to this. My goal is to make the best maple praline mead possible. So obviously, this one's probably the easiest to do because I just put the maple praline flavoring in, walk away, it's done. I want to try and make this taste as the, uh, the same as this maple praline, if not better. So let me tell you what I'm tasting first, and then I will tell you some gravity readings and things. Smelling them, first of all, they both, they smell a little bit similar to the um, maple praline side that the Amoretti has, has the, uh, has of course this very um, molasses -y, kind of caramely bright note to it. I do get a little bit of that nutty, um, kind of sunflowery taste smell to me. I don't know if that makes sense. Compared to the just regular maple syrup so far, yeah, we just have this bright um, honey and maple syrup mixture, which smells incredible, I must say. All right, let's taste them. They're definitely, okay, they're different in sweetness for sure because I added more sugar to this one. This maple syrup, is had more sugar content than the flavoring does. So the maple syrup side's a little sweeter, and obviously I could probably put some maple syrup in here or honey in here to make it the same sweetness, but I think I'm just gonna keep this as a quote control. Uh, there is there is that um, pecan kind of nuttiness that comes from this. So looking in here, this just says ingredients, cane sugar, dextrose, fructose, natural flavor, maple syrup, caramel color. Um, I do get a little bit of a nutty character though. There is a mouthfeel difference between the two as well. The Amoretti has a little fuller body, even though they're from the same batch, while the just maple syrup is a little bit lighter. I am going to, probably not on camera because I don't think it matters, I'm gonna throw, um, let's say, two ounces of pecans onto this one to try and add that uh, praline flavor and 
We'll see if that works. I'm literally just gonna put air locks on them. I'm gonna let this one set. There should be no re-fermentation, of course. I'm gonna let this one set with some pecans, chopped pecans on it, even though there's some oils in the pecans. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of that, but do that, let them set. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do a taste test with a friend and we're gonna see which one they prefer. Do they prefer the Amoretti or my rendition? So could I have done this from the beginning, made a maple praline from scratch? Yes, did I? No, and that's fine. So cutting to the future with some updates. Mm -hmm. Okay, our pecans have sat for two weeks now on this maple praline, or the, I guess, the maple syrup. Let's see what they taste like and uh, see how much flavor it's imparted. There's definitely still a lot of maple character we, we get because of the maple syrup. I do like, oh, interesting. There's like some, some um, different texture mouthfeel that's happened with the pecans. The flavor is not super strong, but it's clear that there's a nutty character there. Would I point and say that it, that it is pecans specifically? No, but it definitely pronounces some nutty character. It's very light, um, and comparing to the other one, I don't know, let's find out in a second at least. I mean, the most interesting thing to me, aside from a little bit of nutty character, is the body that this has added. This has added some um, tannic mouthfeel, some astringency, like or not stringency, some um, kind of, I almost love the word stickiness to your mouth. Basically, it's coating my mouth in a different way. So I find that interesting and good. So my process for these pecans was boiling them to get the oils to come out, hopefully, of the uh, pecan. Then I put them on a baking sheet to dry. I dried them out and then I put them into here. So hopefully the oil is gone. I don't really get any oily texture. I more so get the mouthfeel difference. My next step is going to be to take and rack off of this one. I'm actually gonna rack the other one as well because it's got some uh, sediment at the bottom. And then I'll do a little side by side real fast. Okay, I've racked both of them over. Here is the praline version, which is, looks a little more clear. And here is, or sorry, the Amoretti version. Here is the natural, quote, version, less clear. We'll see if that clears up. Of course, there was some leftover sediment. This is the Amoretti, and this is the pecan. So, um, now, I was gonna do a quick side-by-side -side taste test, but I'm gonna wait and invite some people over to help me decide which one tastes better, ultimately. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. These will sit for a few more weeks until that point. Here we are for the tasting. I have my, my two friends here, Scott and Andrew, and they are um, here to help me decide which one of these is the better maple praline meat. So welcome, Scott, Andrew, glad you're here. How's it going? Thanks, glad to be here. So um, I've already told them a little bit about these meats, and I've also told them kind of the protocol, I guess is what we're gonna call it. We're just gonna go back and forth and taste test them. And um, I want you guys to be brutally honest, and if they're both terrible, <laughs> say it you know what i mean don't don't uh don't pretend they're good um this is the goal of this is to just see how they ended up so i have mine myself um because i know what they are i have them basically made to where i can't see the bottom at all even though they're labeled i'm trying to fake my brain out to just figure out which one i like you guys have no idea which one's which and that's that's the most important part so let's go ahead and get started um i don't know if you can see your labels or not but if you want to start with number one if you're you have it visible let's go ahead and taste that one um i don't know which one my number one is so i'm just going to taste one of these <laughs> so you guys go and start tasting and then give me some notes i get the maple mm -hmm. i do get the maple i get a nutty note from the aroma but not so much from the taste yeah, agreed. I can get the maple from the from the taste, but I also don't. I don't get the nutty note at all from okay. the taste. But the body is really nice. Yeah, I would agree. The body is nice. And we kind of briefly discussed these are maple praline, so they're supposed to have that maple syrup character. They're supposed to have pecan slash nutty flavors in general. I was gonna try and like um, send you guys some maple praline cookies or something of that regard, so you guys had like the 
a greater idea of what that tastes like. But I honestly couldn't find anything. <laughs> so, and I wasn't going to bake something and send it to you because I, I do not bake well. So, um, neither do I. <laughs> it would have been real, real rough. So, um, if you've never had something maple praline, then this is Ooh. a little new. Um, so, that was number one. You guys said that it you didn't, couldn't really get the nuttiness side. You're getting the maple, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was really good. I just didn't get much of the nuttiness, but the body, the body was pretty full, it seemed like. So. Okay, cool. Well, let's switch over to number two now. So, um, go ahead and taste test your number two, and then give me some notes. You get the maple really strong on yeah. the nose. You can smell. You you can you get the maple aroma real quick. Mm-hmm. I almost get. I get the nuttiness too, like as like a an aftertaste almost, like when I'm breathing out after the uh-huh. sip. Almost like a cinnamon kind of in the back there. Really? Huh. Okay. What do you think about so the body my, difference between my the brain two? says cinnamon? But, uh, <laughs> That's okay. The, the body. The body is great. I have to say, it kind of just like sits on your tongue, coats it a bit, and then goes right down the hatch. I like the body on two as well, but I think the body on one was a little better. Okay, cool. Full, well, not better necessarily, fuller, a little more full-bodied. So if you guys had to pick one of these, of the two, um, which one would you prefer or say is more maple praline-esque than the other? Um, I'm going to go with number two as being more maple praline, but mm-hmm. personally, just taste test-wise, I, I like number one better, like for something I would personally want to drink more. Okay. Yeah, I would have to say if you're going for maple praline, number two is the way to go. Okay, cool. Um, you you get the maple, you get the syrup. The it smells like pancakes in the morning, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll go ahead and tell you guys which one is which. Now, um, number two, the one you guys preferred, was actually the amaretti version, which is the the straight up flavoring thrown into the mead. Um, the easiest one, honestly, because I didn't have to really try very hard, but. Uh, yeah, that's that's the full on pecan and the maple sugars from it. Number one was my emulation of it. So number one was well, I'll say this: they both started as a traditional mead, and I put the flavoring into the number two one, like we talked about. And then on the number one version, I added maple syrup to back sweeten to add it, to give it more maple flavor, flavor, of course. And then I also um, did a whole thing of like uh, boiling pecans to get the oils out and drying them and going through a whole process to, to put those in. So I put those into the number one version and that set for, I wanna say three weeks, something like that with the pecans in there, pulled it off mm-hmm. and did that stuff. So. That's great. I mean, that's. I think it's a testament, honestly, to the quality of Amoretti. They, they've done a great job. I mean, of- honestly, I you you had said this in a video before that um, it shelves well. You mm-hmm. you can crack open a bottle a year, maybe two years from now, and you'll still get that maple praline flavor out of that. It won't deteriorate or anything like that over the years. Absolutely, absolutely. And you could tell from this, I honestly, cracked open the bottle and you can smell straight out maple. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for your help. This is, um, I mean, if, if you're watching this right now, then obviously uh, I, I'm going to go and say Amoretti is a great company and they've done awesome stuff. And it's hard to get weird flavors like maple praline. I mean, I've tried to emulate it and it's decent, but it's hard to get pecan to really pop in a mead unless you just like dump a million of them in. So uh, I highlight, I want to highlight them and say use them a lot, but also create your own. If you'd like to try to make your own versions of these things, I think that uh, that is also quite fun. So thank you guys so much for your help. Um, this has been a lot of fun. And I'll say this for anyone watching, this is not this is not the last time you'll see Scott and Andrew. You'll see them again in the future. Um, so thank you guys. All right, no problem. Sweet.